I would like to thank you for taking the opportunity to view this video, 2425 Wappinger Central School District Budget Process Explained, Part 2. The mission of the Wappinger Central School District is to empower all of our students with the competencies and confidence to challenge themselves, pursue their passions, and to realize their potential while growing as responsible members of their community. This year, the budget theme is maximizing resources to benefit our schools and our community. I'd like to recognize the members of the Board of Education, President John Lumia, Vice President John S. Morgan, Trustee Marie Johnson, Trustee Keith Odoms, Trustee Peggy Kelland, Trustee Eddie A. Slowshower, Trustee Michael McFarland, Trustee James Spencer, and Trustee Cheryl Miggetts. Members of the Senior Staff Administration, Dr. Michelle Cardwell, Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, Kristen Dainty, Assistant Superintendent of Finance and Business Development, Richard Zipp, Assistant Superintendent of Student Support Services, Renee Harris, the Executive Director of Human Resources, Julia Montoya, Executive Director of Special Education, Ronald Broes, the Director of Facilities, and Alberta Pedro, the District Clerk and Secretary to the Superintendent. So, what is a school district budget? Simply, a school district budget provides for the educational needs of students while maintaining compliance with New York State. It's the annual spending plan for the district. It's an aggregate view of all of the financial numbers that drive the district's operations for the following year and it is created in alignment with Board of Education annual goals. It's more than a collection of numbers, it's a reflection of the mission and core values of the entire Wappingers, Wappingers Central School District community. The annual budget is based on recommendations from the buildings, offices, Board of Education, and of course, our community. The Board of Education adopts a budget in April. This year, it's April the 23rd that is put forth before the voters on the third Tuesday in May, which this year is May the 21st. What is the property tax cap? Well, in 2011, New York State officials enacted a law that limited the increase in property taxes for municipalities and school districts. That's Chapter 97 of the Laws of 2011. The first year the tax cap legislation for school districts was 2012-2013. While it's often labeled as a 2% tax cap, that can be misleading as the law does not limit a property tax increase to 2%. The law does require for 60% voter approval if the proposed levy exceeds a specific amount called the, lax, uh, the tax levy limit in the calculation. Property tax cap calculation is made up of eight steps to determine what the eventual allowable tax levy is. First of all, you start with the prior year tax levy. Steps two through five, you apply factors for growth and the consumer price index. Steps three, four, six, and seven, addition and subtraction of current and prior year items such as payments in lieu of taxes, known to many as pilots, the inclusion of items is calculated and in accordance with the legislation, such as capital tax levy and the New York State Retirement System adjustments, would be the eighth step. Some of the frequently asked questions that we get in regards to the tax cap. Question one, does the tax cap law mean school tax levies can not increase by more than 2%? The answer is no. Each district prepares their own tax cap levy calculation, consists of eight factors that I just mentioned. And the 2% factor is, the only, is only one of the eight factors to consider in this calculation. What is the uh, tax levy limit? Tax levy limit is the highest allowable tax levy before exclusions that a school district can propose as part of its annual budget that requires 50% approval by the taxpayers. The law does allow for some exceptions, such as exclusions, which may include pension costs and capital expenses. What does the property tax law mean for your tax bill? Law does not limit the property tax rate increases to 2% or any other value for that matter. 
This law changed the parameters of what voter support is needed to pass a budget. And our district capital expenses for BOCES projects under the tax cap, the answer to that is no, they are not. Wappinger Central School District and the tax cap. You will see on this slide the tax cap rate history by percentages. It has gone anywhere from 2% since 2012, 2013 to just under 2.5% at its highest rate. At its lowest rate, it was just above 0% back in 2016 and 2017. It dipped again under 1% in 2022, 2023. So as we said before, the law provides for an eight-step formula that must be used to calculate the tax levy limit. It's important to note that for the 24-25 school year, the consumer price index is currently at 4.12%, the rate of inflation. We are all paying more for many goods and services. Wappinger Central School District is capped at 2% for tax cap calculation purposes. So needless to say, it makes for an interesting budget process. State aid, all school aid awarded to the state's 691 school districts is determined annually by an act of the state legislature through the state budget process. State's funds come from two principal sources, general fund accounts, 88%, lottery funds, 12%. Superintendent generally submits claims for aid to the Office of Management Services at the New York State Education Department. Types of New York State aid, foundation aid, full day, kindergarten conversion aid, universal pre-kindergarten, BOCES, high cost excess cost aid, private excess cost aid, hardware and technology, software, library and textbooks, transportation aid, and building aid. Wappinger Central Schools is experiencing enrollment trends between elementary and secondary schools and this impacts New York State aid. Textbook aid, reimbursable aid, up to $58.25 reimbursement per student based on the prior year applicable expenses. What is a textbook? What's aidable? Hardcover books, courseware, or electronic based instructional materials, novels used to support the textbook. What's non aidable? Encyclopedias, newspapers, magazines, periodicals generic computer software. Instructional computer hardware and equipment aid. It is the lesser of the prior year expenditures or $24.20 reimbursement per student times the resident average daily attendance aid ratio. Expenses that are eligible for aid are those used in serving the computer-based needs of the instructional program. In instances where hardware serves as both instructional and non-instructional, only the instructional portion can be claimed for aid purposes. Computer software up to $14.98 reimbursement per student based on prior year expenses. Expenses must meet eligibility requirements for computer software aid. What's aidable? Purchase price of educational program software. software annual licensing for software purchases, what's non aidable lease expenses for the educational program and software. Library materials aid, up to $6.25 reimbursement per student on prior year, based on prior year expenses. Expenses must meet eligibility requirements for library materials aid. What's aidable Materials that are cataloged for inclusion in the school library media center, Materials with a useful life of over one year. Materials that are not eligible for textbook aid or computer software aid. What is non-aidable? Online databases. So the 2425 revenue sources in addition to New York State aid. Payment in lieu of taxes, pilots, interest earnings, continuing education, tuition, foster care, health services billing, insurance recoveries, gifts and donations. Last year for 23-24, the revenue for the Wappinger Central School District was composed primarily of the tax levy, which was 64%.
New York State aid, 32%. Fund balance, 1.31%. Other revenue, 1.13%. Fund balance infrastructure work, 0.17%. Fund balance in the K-8 special education initiative was 0.42%. Upcoming presentations. The first board meeting in March will be the preliminary budget presentation two. In addition to that, the vehicle purchase presentation. March the 18th will be the superintendent's first recommended budget. April the 8th will be the superintendent's second recommended budget. Hopefully by that time we will have an update on state aid. The 23rd of April will be the final recommended budget, and the Board of Education will vote on the budget adoption. And then on the 13th of May, there will be a community forum, which is the state-mandated public hearing on the budget, and the budget vote is May the 21st. So I would like to take this opportunity once again to thank you for viewing this video. I'd also like to thank the Wappinger Central School District community for their unwavering support of our students, our staff, and our district. And again, we are looking forward to putting together a budget that provides our students with the necessary programs and services to be successful, and one that is fiscally responsible to our taxpayers. That's our goal. We also look to do this by maximizing the resources to benefit our schools and our community. Thank you again for your time.